My call in a ministry was not something I ever expected. Um, I was attending St. Luke United Methodist in Omaha and had become involved with the Befrienders program, which is a lay pastoral ministry. Um, and I loved it. And I never envisioned myself in that. Um, talked with my pastor, with my family, with my sponsor, and um, decided, well, I guess God is calling me into ministry. I never expected it. Um, went off to seminary, got an MDiv with a concentration in pastoral care, and I'm now a hospital chaplain. And loving what I do, so happy to be in ministry. I can't believe how lucky I am to do what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, if you're getting called into ministry, listen, explore. Educational requirements of a deacon um, include a bachelor's and then a master's um, from seminary, either a master of divinity, which is what I have, or a master of arts in Christian ed, music ministry, etc. Um, then comes the fun of candidacy and eventual ordination. Um, you get to take four hours of psychological testing, you get to sit with a psychologist, um, they get to dive deep into your innermost being, tell your call story over and over and over again, and you get to get physicals. Yeah. Get a physical in order to get ordained. Nobody believes me when I tell them that. Um, but it is the truth about uh, becoming a United Methodist deacon and ordained, and there's no better ministry than what I get to do right now as an ordained deacon. Being a deacon, it can be tough to get there. I mean, you got to do graduate school. But um, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love being a deacon. Um, my advice for anyone who is feeling called to ministry is pray about it, talk to a lot of people about it, and then talk to people who do, do different ministries. Talk to the people who lead churches. Talk to the people who work in food pantries. Talk to those who do Christian ed. Talk to chaplains. Um, all are very viable ministries. Um, don't limit yourself. Most of us are called to be in a parish, but I personally wasn't. And I'm glad I did that exploration. And think about finances. When I told my sponsor I was going to go into ministry, she said, Oh, you're going to be poor. And yeah, that's kind of the truth. Um, think really about um, where you want to go and the finances that can get you there. And there's always that question during ordination of, are you in debt as to embarrass yourself or the church? So, just some practical stuff. Ministry is a wonderful thing, but you gotta have a life as well. I knew I was called to be a deacon as I was going through seminary. Um, I hadn't realized when going into seminary that uh, deacons and elders orders had separated and got really interested in what a deacon is and does. I had friends who wanted to be deacons. And so I explored with Margaret Ann Crane, um, who's a deacon herself and a professor at Garrett, um, and looking at where my gifts lie. And they lie more in a deacon's uh, service than elders. I'm, Personally, no, I'm not called to lead a church. Um, I'm more than happy to support people who are, but I'm called to be a hospital chaplain and to be able to bring calmness and Christ into situations that uh, really need that, that presence. I never thought 
I would be here. I never thought I would do chaplaincy. I remember chaplains from my trauma surgery uh, residency. We'd take them with us when we went to tell family bad news. And then we'd tell them the news and leave the chaplains behind. And I never thought, so what does a chaplain do with that? How does the chaplain minister with that? And now I get to use both my medical knowledge and my chaplaincy to uh, provide the presence of Christ in times of crisis, um, in life-threatening situations. I get to be the non-anxious presence in the room and just bring a little bit of humanity to the process.